Good afternoon. Welcome and welcome back to Friday Reflection and Prayer Time. Thank you for your support and thank you for being here to continue the journey of the season of Lent. We began a series of reflection on the words from the cross. Last Friday, I did uh, briefly talk about uh, some language change. <clears throat> seven words from the cross, seven verses from the cross, seven cries from the cross by Jesus. And today we have come to another word. We have come to another words. We have come to another cry, cry from the cross by Jesus. The fifth one. Jesus uh, said, I thirst. I thirst. Before we look at uh, the word, the verse, the cry from the cross of Jesus, I want to read a scripture. The book of Hebrews, chapter 6. I want to read the first six verses. Hebrews 6, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, let us go on towards perfection, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ and not laying again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith towards God, instruction about baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits, for it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come, and then have fallen away since on their own, they are crucifying again the son of God and are holding him up to contempt. <clears throat> this is the living word of God. Let God's people respond by saying, thanks be to God. When Jesus said, I thirst from the cross, we all know the human voice of Jesus. I thirst, of course. Humanly speaking, Jesus was expressing through this word, through this cry, through this verse, his pain, his sorrow, his agony, and his suffering on the cross as he was bleeding to death. I thirst. He was thirsty. No doubt about it. But after 2,000 years, when we reflect on this word, verse, and cry of Jesus from the cross, the takeaway for all of us, Jesus was humanly expressing his pain, sorrow, and suffering. At the same time, he is still thirsty for you and me for our churches, for faith communities, to reach out to people beyond the four walls with loving 
service, outreach, mission, and evangelism. Every time we move out in loving service to others, those who are hungry, those who are thirsty, those who are naked, those who are in all kinds of trouble. When we minister to the poor, the needy, with the resources that we are gifted with and blessed with, whenever we do anything to relieve the hurt and suffering of those in pain, either as an individual Christian or as a faith community, as a church of Jesus Christ, we are doing the service, outreach, mission, evangelism unto Jesus. This is the mission of Jesus we are doing. It's very important for us to know that. Ministry to the people beyond the four walls in our communities. That is the mission of Jesus Christ. We are called, we are commissioned, we are mandated, and we are sent out. We are sent forth to serve the people in need. Even I'm bold enough to say that that is non-negotiable. Every faith community, every Christian is called to love God and love people. All people. Of course, uh, as I said, uh, Jesus was expressing his human suffering through this one word, thirst. He was thirsty on the cross losing his uh, human energy because he was uh, already bleeding from head to toe. Of course, the word thirst, of course, the word thirst reflects the human suffering of Jesus on the cross. At the same time, the word invites us after a couple of thousands of years later, Please go and serve the people in need. Those who are hungry, those who are thirsty, those who are hurt, those who are in trouble, those who are in pain, those who are in all kinds of suffering in our communities, in our neighborhood. The word thirst for me, it is other centered word that Jesus uttered. From the cross. Because all through his life and ministry and mission, Jesus was always other centered Jesus. Other centered Jesus. I want to remind all of us uh, what Paul wrote from uh, um, the epistle of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 4. This is uh, uh, the wisdom of Paul when we think and talk and act about being an other-centered Christian, being other-centered faith community or church, being other-centered Christian family. Let's remind ourselves, each of you, Philippians 4, chapter 2, verse 4, each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interests of others. Interest of others. Very, very important wisdom of Paul to the first century Christians, first century church. And this is a great reminder to all of us who are living in the 21st century, Christian churches, Christians. We are called to be people 
of other centered. Let me close with uh, uh, a story. It comes from his story. And uh, many, many years ago, when I was uh, reading about uh, some of the pre-Reformation uh, uh, saints, <clears throat> one of them uh, is uh, Saint Teresa of Avila. Teresa of Avila. Some of you might have uh, come across uh, this name and uh, the story of uh, Saint uh, uh, Teresa of Avila. And she was uh, from Spain and uh, she was uh, a Spanish um, Carmelite nun. I believe that she was the one who established the Carmelite order for the Roman Catholic uh, Church. <clears throat> he was uh, born in the uh, 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 early 16th century. I think she was born 15, uh, 15 in Spain. And she was born uh, uh, on March 28th. That's why I remembered her. In, in a week's time, uh, you know, March 28th come. Um, and uh, uh, People are still thinking and writing about this uh, great saint, Teresa of Avila. And here is a story about her. Let me close uh, our time together with her story. Teresa of Avila constantly battled with terrible headaches. And she called those headaches those rushing waterfalls in my head. It's an interesting way of describing uh, one's headache. Those rushing waterfalls in my head. She was uh, uh, battle, battling with uh, terrible headaches, with painful chronic fever as well. And she suffered at least one paralytic uh, stroke. Yet, despite these painful sufferings, she was able to go about her task. She was able to go about her task with courage and determination. When she thought how utterly out of proportion to her physical strength were the tasks she had to fulfill, she would laugh to herself. That may seem uh, weird. You know, when you're suffering, how can you laugh? How can you have a smile? In 1580, she was suffering with flu under the awful depression which uh, flu can bring to a human being. People noticed that her cheerfulness, laughter, and smile started uh, fading away, but not for long, the history says, not for long. When she drew back from the idea of a long winter journey, she heard the voice of the Lord. She heard the voice of the Lord say to her, do not mind the cold. I am the true woman. I am the true woman. She set out on her travels with her usual faith and courage. Even one writer commenting on St. Teresa's courage, indomitable courage, in the face of great pain and difficulty, said, one can comb the record of her life with scrupulous care and not find one trace of self-pity. Not find one trace of self-pity. With this, the secret of her ability to rise above the pain and suffering that racked her body I do not know for sure, but I suspect it was a heart, 
occupied with love for others, their heart occupied with love for others, may not be proof against pain, but the love may help to moderate it. Friends, uh, we just give thanks and praises to God for this wonderful saint who lived in 16th century with courage, determination, faith, and love. Faith and love. So when we hear uh, the word from the cross, the cry from the cross, thirst, Jesus is still thirsty. He wants his people to go out with courage, determination, faith, and love, coupled with a sense of commitment and service, and being other-centered people of God. Other centered people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, uh, thank you for uh, these uh, words from the cross, the cries from the cross, the utterances of Jesus from the cross. Yes, Lord, uh, Jesus was thirsty. Even today, Jesus was thirsty on the cross. But today, Jesus is thirsty. He is thirsty for his people to go out in the name of Jesus, offering help, hope, and healing to all people, people of all ages, people of all nations, people of all races. Help us a lot to be filled with courage. We may have cold, we may have fever, we may have physical limitations, but help us a lot to be always other-centered people of God. Other-centered people of God. Lead us, O Lord, this weekend and beyond. Help us, O Lord, to be a source of blessing to people in pain and suffering. Help us, O Lord, to be a source of blessing to people who are hurt who are thirsty, who are hungry, and bless our church's mission. Any mission that is reaching out, that is considered to be a mission to the people in need, locally, nationally, and globally, wherever people are being touched and changed and transformed, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, Lord, bless all the mission outreaches, mission initiatives and efforts. We want to pray for all the churches and especially our church, the first United Methodist Church here in West Hallis, and all the churches in our communities and all the missionary organizations around the globe. Help them, O Lord, with needed resources so that they would continue to be a channel of blessing. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for. We do not know what their situations and circumstances. Bless them, O Lord. Bless them according to their needs. Yes, Lord. Lead us and guide us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you, people of God, for joining me. And God's blessings of good health and strength. And uh, let us continue the journey of uh, the season of Lent. And uh, just about a couple of uh, weeks more, we will be celebrating the great festival, the celebration of Easter. God be with all of us until we meet again. Bye now. <laughs>